Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose xn and yn are sequences of real numbers. If xn converges to x and yn converges to y, then xn times yn converges to x times y. Now, before we get into the proof, let's first remind ourselves what these three things mean. To start, if you recall, by definition of the limit of a sequence, to say that xn converges to x means for every epsilon greater than zero. There exists a positive integer k, such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon. And similarly, to say that yn converges to y means the same thing as this, it's just instead we have the absolute value of yn minus y is less than epsilon. And finally, to say that x and y n converges to x y means the same thing as these, it's just instead we have absolute value of x and y n minus x y is less than epsilon. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. Now, to start off the proof, let's suppose that we already have sequences x n y n, and we're working under the assumption that x n converges to x and y n converges to y. Our whole goal is to prove that x n times y n converges to x times y. So the whole goal of this proof is to prove this statement. So since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, give me an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And what we want to do from here is we want to find a positive integer, which makes this statement turn out true. Okay, now to start, since xn is a convergent sequence, it follows that xn is a bounded sequence. And what that means is, is that there is some positive real number a, such that the absolute value of xn is less than or equal to a for every positive integer n. And now let's define b to be the bigger of a and the absolute value of y. Notice, since b is the bigger of these two numbers, we have that b is greater than or equal to a, which is greater than zero. So b must be greater than zero. And now, since epsilon is greater than zero and b is greater than zero, this tells us that epsilon over 2b is greater than zero. Now, since we know that xn converges to x and yn converges to y, this means we are given that these two statements are true. If we first consider this statement, we know that this statement works for every positive real number. So it must work for the positive real number epsilon over 2b. So if we take this epsilon to be epsilon over 2b, then this must be true. So there is some positive integer I'll call p, such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to p, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon over 2b. In a similar way, we consider this second statement. Since this statement works for every positive real number, it must work for the positive real number epsilon over 2b. So if we take this epsilon to be epsilon over 2b, then this is true. So there is some positive integer I'll call q such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to q, the absolute value of yn minus y is less than epsilon over 2b. Remember, our whole goal has been to find a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. And we're going to do that right now. We're going to take k to be the bigger of p and q. And we're going to show that this choice of k will make this statement turn out true. So at this point, we want to show for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of x n y n minus x y is less than epsilon. 
So, since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer greater than or equal to k, give me an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to k. I'll call it n. And from here, we want to show that the absolute value of xn yn minus xy is less than epsilon. So, let me start out by writing the left-hand side of this inequality. Now, to start, I'm going to add and subtract xn times y. And from here, we see that we can apply the triangle inequality, right? The absolute value of this is less than or equal to the absolute value of this plus the absolute value of this. Now, in this first absolute value, we're going to factor out xn. In this second absolute value, we're going to factor out y. And we know from properties of absolute values that this is just absolute value of xn times absolute value of yn minus y plus absolute value of y times absolute value of xn minus x. But now, let's recall that this statement is true. And since this statement works for every positive integer, it must work for the positive integer n. So if we take n to be the n we have here, then we have that this is true. So the absolute value of xn is less than or equal to a. And because of that, this must be less than or equal to this, where all we've done is we replace absolute value of xn with a. And then, since b is the bigger of a and the absolute value of y, we know that a is less than or equal to b and the absolute value of y is less than or equal to b. So both a and absolute value of y are less than or equal to b. And that tells us that this must be less than or equal to this, where all we've done here was we replaced a and absolute value of y with b. But now, let's remind ourselves that k is the bigger of p and q, which means that k is greater than or equal to p and k is greater than or equal to q. Well, since n is greater than or equal to k, that tells us that n must be greater than or equal to p and n must be greater than or equal to q. But also, let's remind ourselves that this statement works for every positive integer greater than or equal to p. So it must work for the positive integer n. So if we take n to be the n we have here, then we have that this is true. So the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon over 2b. In a similar way, we remind ourselves that this statement works for every positive integer greater than or equal to q. So it must work for the positive integer n. So if we take n to be the n we have here, then we have that this is true. So the absolute value of y n minus y is less than epsilon over 2b. And because both this guy and this guy are less than epsilon over 2b, this entire thing must be less than this, where all we've done was we replaced these two guys with epsilon over 2b. But then we see that this is just equal to epsilon. So now let's put this together. We see that under the assumption n is greater than or equal to k, we have that this guy is less than epsilon. Since n was arbitrary, this means we have shown for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, this guy is less than epsilon. So we have found a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Namely, this positive integer was the bigger of p and q. So this is true. And we showed that this statement was true under the assumption of some arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. Since epsilon was arbitrary, this means we have shown for all epsilon greater than zero, this is true. So we have proven this entire statement, which means we have proven that xn times yn converges to x times y. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.